I don't know if you've noticed, but it seems like almost every style YouTuber, definitely every fragrance YouTuber has at some point over the last few years released a perfume, released a cologne. All of these people are putting out fragrances. And the question is, who makes the best one? Gents, if you were to go out there and buy all these fragrances, it would cost you thousands of dollars. How do I know this? Because I did it. I went out there and I bought over $3,000 worth of these fragrances. I did have some sent to me, but the vast majority, I went in and I bought it first because I wanted to give you guys a straight up opinion of which YouTuber is making the best fragrances out there on the market and which fragrances you're gonna wanna skip. Now, gents, I'm going to be straight up. This was a very difficult video for me to make. I am good friends with so many of the fragrance YouTubers out there, the style YouTubers out there that have come up with these fragrances that put their heart and soul into actually getting these out on the market. And if you disagree with me, I put one of your favorite YouTuber scents at the bottom or I put it at the top and you don't think it should be there. I want to hear from you guys down in the comments below. Without further ado, let's get into the ranking. So coming in at number 49, I have Fragrance Dubois Minuet at Demi. And this is Demi Rawlings release a couple years ago. I bought it with my own money. I've never actually been in contact with her. And I have to say that this is definitely a fragrance for women. So that's why I'm putting it so low. I thought this would be more of a unisex fragrance. And when I received it, I was excited. It came beautifully packaged. But as soon as I smelled, I'm like, I cannot wear this. This is way too feminine. I think the majority of her audience are men. And so I was really surprised that her first release was geared towards the ladies. That being said, my daughter absolutely loves this fragrance. So again, just because it's ranked low does not mean it's a bad fragrance. I just want to warn you, if you see this out there, this is not for men. This is a women's fragrance. The same thing with Adola by Navitus Parfums. Now, the pink color should have given it away. And I did buy this knowing that this would be a feminine scent, but I can't rank it any higher because it is what it is. Again, my wife and my daughter love this scent. It's beautiful. It's got the rose in there. This is a, it's a solid perfume, but it is geared towards the ladies. So if you're a man looking at this, skip it. So coming in at number 47, we have Oud Luxuria. This one is just a dirty Oud, in my opinion, and it's unwearable for me. It's too strong and the Oud is just off-putting. I get it. Some people are into this type of smell. It's got its fans. I'm just not one of them. The same thing with the next fragrance, Victorian Tobacco. So I talked to Ash over at Gent Sense about this. I This was his most challenging scent. And for me, it is not something I would ever wear. It definitely, if I think of a Victorian guy smoking a cigar, maybe cigarettes back 150 years ago, that smell, it's just, just not something, again, I would ever wear. Coming in at 45th place, we have Four Vices by Beard Brand. Many people don't even know that Eric over at Beard Brand has put out some amazing fragrances. This, in my opinion, is just not a smell I'm into. The cannabis note is a real turnoff. I just have just not great associations with people smoking marijuana growing up. So this is something that really turns me off. And it just goes to show how you can have a negative association with a note that some people find positive. They absolutely love it. And nothing against anybody, you know, now it's going to become legal here in the United States. No issues with it. Uh, it's just, again, a scent I'm not into. Coming in at 44th place, we have another Galleria Parfum. This is going to be Dusk to Dawn. Maybe I love the movie too much. I was expecting something that would smell like a sexy vampire. I did not get it in this one. They try to mix in, I think, some accords, some notes that just don't come together. And for me, it's a pass. The same thing with Loudest here. This is a woody citrus whose combinations I just didn't get. A lot of people are saying great things about this on Fragrantica. Uh, for me, the combination just doesn't work with my skin, my chemistry. This one, yeah, I wouldn't pick up. And the sweetest fragrance here at the bottom is one that is just too sweet for me, and that is Date for Men. Jeremy Fragrance, a good friend, him and his brother Camille have done amazing things building up their company, and one of their fragrances is going to be near the top. But this one, it was just way too sweet, over the top for me. I have to pass. Now, the next eight fragrances are not bad, but I don't think they're amazing. And if I had to go out there and spend my money again for a new bottle, I wouldn't. First up, we've got Oud Imperium by Navitus Parfums. Again, this was the, in their first release. It was one of their original seven fragrances. And this one did better with the Oud. If I'm going to go with an Oud fragrance, this initially was one of my first and it was wearable. Is it something though I reach for? The answer is no. Next up, Shades of Seduction. This is a decent fragrance. It's warm, spicy, a nice oriental, but I've already got so many in my collection and for the price I paid for this, I would probably skip on this one. 
Next up, we have Intimus by Navitas Parfums. The first time I got my nose on this, absolutely loved it, but then I realized it reminded me of Ultra Mall by Jean-Paul Gaultier. So, you know, again, it is a separate fragrance. It is not a clone, but I do feel that it's very similar to, and I've already got so many fragrances like that. So for this one, yeah, I would skip. Next up, we've got By the Yuzu Grove by Galleria Parfums. I see what they were trying to do with this, and I like how it actually fits with the collection of fragrances. It was the strong citrus, but it just reminded me too much of Issey Miyake's uh, Lotus A Pour Homme, which you can get a lot cheaper. Uh, this does have staying power. This one is heavier and is, is a great fragrance. It's just something that I already had a ton of citruses, and I don't know, there was something heavy about this that made me not want to wear this in hot weather. So I guess if I wanted a winter citrus, it would be a great option. But for me, that's not something I reach for. Next up, Opulentus by Navitus Parfums. When I first smelled this, I thought unique. I'd never smelled anything like this, but it just, I, I tried to get this one to work. It is a unique scent. It is something I haven't smelled. I don't have anything like in that my collection, hence why I'm happy I have it. That being said, I never reach for this. So now it's getting harder because some of these are actually really nice. Cognac Cafe by Galleria Parfums, a really nice, smooth scent. I've got so many though, again, in my collection. And this is the hard part is that as you start to build up a larger collection, you become more discerning. You're more, you, you want something new. You want something that fits and isn't a repeat of things that you already have. Um, heavier, sweet cognac. Uh, I love cognac or used to, I don't drink anymore, um, but it's a nice one. Although I did not, I feel he should, should have gone stronger on the cognac. So that's I feel like they got the cafe right. There is like a coffee, like a cream note in this, but the cognac wasn't strong enough. So for that reason, uh, I'm going to put it lower on this list. Next up, Soliel Martin, which I just butchered that pronunciation. So if you know how to pronounce this, let me know in the comments below, but uh, it is a beautiful scent. It's just something I already have in my collection. So you're going to notice that theme keeps popping up. But this one right here, um, I hated putting, in fact, when I went to smell it, right, where I looked at where I ranked it, I'm like, why did I rank this thing so low? It's a solid scent. Um, it's just, just not something I'm going to pull off. The woods are really strong in this, but it's a nice citrus woods. If you're looking for that combination, you want something bright, something you wear in the fall and the spring, definitely, definitely check this one out. Next up, we've got Moving Times. This one, I was a bit confused. I wasn't inspired by it. It is a decent scent. If somebody were to get this as a gift, they would think, oh, this smells nice. But is it something that's going to move you, something that's going to inspire you? Well, not for me. So that's why I put it so low. So the next fragrance on this list and the one I was just talking about, Absolutio. So I think a video about a year, two years ago, I ranked this as my favorite from Navitus. It has now fallen. Um, it is still a good fragrance. Is it something I'm reaching for? No. Maybe it has too many medicinal like properties or something I smell. The almond isn't as strong as I initially thought now that I've got some stronger almond fragrances. It just hasn't, you know, it didn't last up there at the top. That being said, it is a unique fragrance. It, if you're looking for a gourmand, uh, you want something with a little bit of caramel and chocolate, definitely check this one out. Next up, we've got Elation by Navi Tus Parfums. And this one is a solid fragrance, nothing super inspiring. Um, Buck over at Big Beard Business was the guy that put this out. And I'm going to talk about some of his fragrances a little bit higher up on the list. This one I did put lower though, because it's decent, but it, there's nothing really inspiring about it for me. The same thing with Verve Mateen, again, by Navitus. This one though, because of the mint and it's bright, it's fresher. I did rank this one higher just simply. I like it a bit more, uh, but I've already got other ones that are higher up, I think that are even better than this, uh, but a decent fragrance. So if you're able to get a deal on this, if you know someone that can get you a, you know, a sample, definitely try it. And speaking of samples, I have a sample here of the Embrace. I was able to wear it a couple times, a very nice, warm, Honey fragrance with a bit of aromatic, just a sweet, beautiful fragrance. Um, is there, there are other ones I think that are a bit better, which I'll have higher on the list. That being said, I wish I had a full bottle. Monica, uh, really appreciate you sending this to me. Monica worked with Navitus to put this one out just, I think, about a year ago. An amazing fragrance, but it tells you a lot about the fragrances that are higher on this list because I think that they're even better. Next up, we've got my favorite from Galleria Parfums, and this is going to be Dream Woods. I didn't expect to like this fragrance as much as I did. I'm very happy to have this one in my collection. It's sweet. It's a bit aromatic. This is one some people say it smells like ultra mall. I don't get that. I mean, 
a little bit. It may be Ultramon was inspired by this one. I mean, this one is really nice. A work of art. I'm very happy to have it in my collection, uh, but it still didn't make the top 10. Um, maybe I just need to wear it more. And after saying all that, I'm wondering why did I rank unisex higher than that one? I mean, unisex is a good fragrance. And I actually got more wear out of this than I expected. It's not as sweet as day. Therefore, I felt it was more wearable. And I did feel it leaned masculine. It wasn't as feminine as I thought it was going to be. So, this one, maybe just because I had more of a history with it, I wore more of it, that Man, that's probably why I ranked it higher. Next up, we have Navus. Now, this one could have easily made the top 10. It is a beautiful citrus aromatic woody fragrance that I wore a lot when I first received it, but the last year I really haven't uh, worn it much. Maybe I need to start. This is just a solid fragrance. Some people say it's very similar to uh, Elysium by Roja. I can see the similarities, but since I received this one first, I like it better. And a lot of people also, you know, say, oh, you know, the guys over at Navitus, they copied the design of Roja Dove and their fragrances. You know, that's a bunch of BS. If you actually know the history, you know that uh, both of these companies came out with their fragrances very almost at the same time, although uh, Roja came out a little bit earlier. And if you've ever made a fragrance, you know that it's literally a year out that you're designing the bottles. It just so happened the bottle design was similar. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I, I see it, but uh, yeah, understand that these fragrances from the House of Navitus, they put a lot of money, a lot of effort into this. I think that they're solid fragrances. And if you can get your nose on them or you can get samples, which they do have sample sets, uh, it's well worth getting your nose on this one right here. Next up, we've got Arcanum by the House of Navitus. And I'd have to say that this is one that I think is the most luxurious in their house. If I were going to wear black tie, this would be a fragrance that you could pull off sweet, seductive, absolutely beautiful. Uh, and that's why I've got it so high on this list. Now, before I get into the top 10, which will include a lot more than 10, I want to talk about a house that makes fragrances that are inspired by other fragrances. And that is Pete and Pedro. So, you've seen me over the years talk about my friend Aaron Marino and his fragrances. Now, a lot of people say, oh, clones, you know, when they make a copy of a fragrance, that's not a real fragrance. Yes, it is. You can wear it. People will give you compliments. And here's the deal. If you don't have the money to go out there and spend $400, $500 on a bottle of really high-end fragrance, you can get a clone. And better yet, if you actually already own, in this case, let's take Creed Aventus and their clone over there is Rebel at Pete and Pedro. Well, why not own both? Because guess what? This right here is a very good, now is, is 80, 90% of Creed Aventus. I know because I've seen what they've done in the lab with this thing. I've talked with Aaron multiple times. I know how he's reformulated it actually to make it stronger because he realized that, hey, he wears Creed Aventus. He wanted something that smelled just like it. Now, can they get exactly no? Because Creed Aventus is going to use certain ingredients which are just really, really expensive. And I know for these guys, it's about keeping things at a price point for people just getting into the space. That being said, Rebel is my top pick. If you're going to start with anything over at Pete and Pedro, again, great company, good people, and I support them. Uh, now, King, Green Irish Tweed, that's what this one was inspired by, and it is a good copy. 90% there. Uh, if you've never spelt Green Irish Tweed, tweed inc incredibly, I'm tripping over my tongue here, incredibly versatile fragrance. And they did, they knocked it out the park with Park with King. Villain, this one inspired by Tobacco Vanille by Tom Ford. A 50 mil of Tobacco Vanille is going to set you back at least a few hundred bucks right here for a fraction of that price. You can get something that smells very similar and you can actually wear it out and get reactions. This one is going to, you're going to have a little bit of hair on your chest to pull this off. That being said, I love Tobacco Vanille and Villain, they did a good job. Hero, this one was inspired by Aquadigio. Not sure which version of Aquadigio. I never got that information out, but uh, this one right here, a good, you know, clone as well. And again, nothing wrong with clone houses, especially if you've tried or you own the original fragrance and you want something that you can wear, you know, during the week, maybe, you know, just around town. And then on important events, you could wear the real thing. Um, yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. So, I said I would have another fragrance from Monica Sealch higher up on the list, and that is Carte Blanche by Navitus Parfum. She did this in conjunction with them, and this is an absolute 
banger. And I talked about Absolutio, that almond note not being as strong as I've started to smell other ones. This was the one. As soon as I smelled it, I'm like, wow, this thing definitely has that nutty, just it's beautiful. This is a gourmand that when you wear this, the ladies are going to want to get close and eat you up. In fact, you go over and you go to Read On Frey, granted, everyone is loving this fragrance. Definitely the best release in her collection. Now, the next YouTuber fragrances on this list are ones that I don't think many of you guys have heard of, and that's Mark Gebauer and his three fragrances. These two right here, they weren't in the top 10. I probably should have ranked them down lower, but I just got them and I wanted to include them on this list. And I think they're both actually pretty impressive. So they probably would have been in the middle somewhere, maybe a little bit higher for Orange Flamingo. But let me talk first about Arabian King. This is a rose fragrance. It has a number of other accords and notes, but this is, in my opinion, a Middle Eastern fragrance that's geared towards a Western audience. It is not off-putting, not overpowering. And if you're looking for a rose fragrance as a man, you want something niche by a YouTuber, check out Arabian King. Now, Orange Flamingo is really nice. This is going to be a white floral fragrance, which you would think with the orange, the citrus would be overpowering. It actually wasn't. It was a really nice intro. And then it gets into a really smooth, woody fragrance that is, you know, just simply a no-brainer. You could wear this into the office. And I'll get into the fragrance that I ranked up high on this list and why. I was expecting this to be a lot stronger, overpoweringly strong. It wasn't. The citrus was nice and balanced. I just think, and, and the name, you know, it's just a unique looking fragrance. Definitely, if you can get your nose on it, try it. But the fragrance I'm going to put in my top 10 was the first Mark Gebauer fragrance that I ever got my nose on. And it blew me away for a number of reasons. And that is Air Tiger. If you're not familiar, this is named after the Air Tiger Rolex watch. Uh, and like that watch, this is meant to be strong, overpowering. This fragrance is the most nuclear fragrance I own. I'm talking to you, one spray, you will smell this for 24 hours. Three sprays, like I first, I usually go three sprays, didn't even think about it. And I could, that smelled this thing for like four days. The, I still have a jacket six months ago, I probably sprayed that you can still pick this thing up on. If you want, and it, this stuff puts hair on your chest. This is a strong, masculine, manly scent. Again, the accords here, you're going to see they're going to be some aromatic mixed with the spicy, mixed in with the amber. This, I think is really smooth, is a strong, overpowering masculine fragrance. I think it's really unique and you don't really see people putting out anything like this. So for that reason, I had to put this high on my list. All right, Jen. So the next three fragrances on this list, I really couldn't rank because they're mine. I'm talking about Honor, Courage, and Commitment. This is the Mission Fragrance set. And if you haven't heard about what I'm doing over at Mission Fragrances, these are the world's first scent triggers designed specifically to help men achieve a higher state of mind. What am I talking about? The idea, have you ever smoked coffee first thing in the morning? What's it do? It wakes you up. If you ever smelt something actually just really pleasant, reminds you of home, it brings back a memory. The thing is, is our olfactory system can be hijacked. It can be leveraged to our advantage to help get you in the zone if you're an athlete, to help get you in the zone if you need to perform at a higher level. Fragrances can. You can condition yourself to actually feel more competent, to feel more confident, to just feel better about yourself. And that's exactly what we're doing at Mission Fragrances. In fact, this comes with an entire course. Notice the set doesn't come, they don't come separately. They're not really made. Yes, they smell amazing. And I could go into all the notes, talk about all the details, you know, and we've had over 300 people go through our course and use and leverage the power of the Mission Fragrance set. And this is just the beginning. Guys, if you're at all interested, down in the description of today's video, I'm linking over to Mission Fragrances. You can learn more. I'm not going to bore you with all the details here, but I will tell you, if you're interested in the science of scent, being able to leverage the power of your olfactory system to hack it so that you can get more out of life, guys, you need to check out what we're doing over at Mission Fragrances. Seriously, gents, this is a project I'm incredibly passionate about. And if you want to learn more, use that link in the description of today's video. It'll take you over to Mission Fragrances. You can sign up on the email list for free just to find out more information about the science of scent. And with that being said, let's get to the next fragrance on this list. Next up, we've got Michael Malul's Jet Black. And this was made in conjunction with Ash over at Gents Scents. This is, has been his baby's latest release. And I have to say, it is better than my opinion than any of the galleries. This is the top fragrance from that YouTuber. And uh, when I smell this, it just smells beautiful. Amazing. There's a bit of a synthetic note in there, but it doesn't bother me. Um, we've got yellow florals, a bit of cinnamon. You're also going to pick up a little bit of citrus, warm, spicy, powdery. Um, the accords there are 
pretty easy to pick out. That's what I like about this fragrance. It is complicated, yet it's also just simply easy to wear. If you're looking for something to wear in the cooler months, in you know fall, winter, maybe cool spring, definitely pick this one up. And gents, I'm going to be cheating here because I'm putting two in the next spot. We've got Old Money and Temple Smoke by Beard Brand. So I've spoken with Eric about this a lot. He didn't want fragrances which were overpowering. I talked about Air Tiger by Mark Gebauer uh, that is just will last for days. These fragrances are going to be gone within four to six, six hours. And Eric did that on purpose. He didn't want fragrances that would stick around that you wouldn't be able to get rid of. He wanted, in fact, if you are familiar with Beard Brand, you'll know that all of their fragrances, they actually have houses and families so you can get a beard cream, you can get a shaving oil, and they will all smell the same. And they're all going to be within that line. And I really appreciate why, why they did that. So many guys, they're like, I don't want to mix scents. I'm worried if I'm going to wear this lotion or I put this fragrance on, they're going to, you know, they're going to conflict with each other. And Beard Brand helps you get rid of that. So if you haven't checked out Beard Brand, awesome company, great people. They also have an amazing YouTube channel. And both of these, I just got to give them an even tie right here. Uh, old Money and Temple Smoke, amazing smells. All right, so now we're in the top five. And no surprise, the house in Navitus has a few fragrances here. And I know I'm cheating, but I'm going to put all of these as number five because I absolutely love them. And that first up, Virtus. This one reminds me so much of Carlisle, but it is different. As many of you guys know, Carlisle by Parfums de Marley, one of my favorite fragrances. And this thing took it and made it even better better. Absolutely love it. And so as soon as I smelled this, I was like, oh, wow, absolutely love this. Over here, we had Primus. First up, I loved the name. Optimus Prime, one of my favorites as a kid, but really it was very a primal scent. A lot of people said that they took a similar DNA from Creed Aventus, which I do not think is a bad thing. And it is a fresh, you know, really nice uplifting fragrance, except it is much stronger than any Creed Aventus. And again, it's not a clone. It's, I don't even really feel it's that inspired by, but it does have some similar notes. That being said, it has more longevity. The one that I will officially put as my number five is going to be Viva More. And again, this one not really talked about. Uh, I know it, the release of it was a little bit different. It was with a, a different influencer than Steven over at Red Lessons, but then Navitus re-released it. I got a copy of it. I have to say, I absolutely love it. This is fresh, yet it's sweet, yet it's not heavy sweet. So you can wear this during the summer. You could pull this off in the fall and the winter, but the summer is where this is really going to shine. It's going to get compliments and there's nothing really like it out there. A lot of people have said Baccarat Rouge 540 mixed in with Creed Aventus is this fragrance. I'm not sure because uh, I've never mixed those two, but I do know that I love this fragrance and therefore I've got to put it number five on my list. Next up from the house of Naughton and Wilson, I want to talk about Bon Viver. This is not going to be my number four, but it's a solid entry, more of a daytime fragrance. I've got a few med medicinal notes. It reminds me of just old school fragrances with the citrus. Um, I mean, decent, but it was really right here. Gravitas Pour Homme that I want to highly recommend. This was his first entry. Dan is a good friend of mine. I bought both these fragrances with my own money to support him. And I have to say that he knocked it out of the park with Gravitas. This one right here, if you like Bois de Portugal by Creed, you are going to love this one. You want an old school fougere. This is exactly what this is. Yet it's a modern interpretation. It is a unique fragrance and highly recommended. I like fragrances like this. Initially, when I got into fragrances, I stayed away from them. They're old school. I didn't necessarily understand them. I was going with what the modern fragrances, what we see out there on the uh, you know designer shelves. This is not going to be confused. This would be confused maybe with a Tom Ford fragrance, but it would never be confused with anything that's overly sweet, overly synthetic. This one right here, definitely get your nose on it. Highly recommend it. It's also incredibly affordable. So go check it out, guys. Gravitas by Mr. Smelly, a great guy, great YouTuber, and awesome fragrance. And speaking of a great guy, for number three, I'm going to talk about George Zaharoff's signature Pour Homme. Now, I know George has released a number of other fragrances. Strange enough, I haven't got my nose on them, George. I'm so sorry. Uh, I just, yeah, didn't see, I think he ran out of some of the other fragrances they put out. That being said, he did get me a couple bottles of his uh, signature. I have to say it is friggin' amazing. In fact, I've ranked it before as my number one fragrance for the winter of masculine fragrances. Why? Because it reminds me of just simply midnight mass. It's the myrrh. It's the incense. This is definitely a colder weather fragrance. That being said, 
I wore the heck out of this. This is like my second bottle I've gone through. Um, I absolutely love this one. It was one of the earlier fragrances I did get my hands on, probably when my collection was like 10 to 15, and I kept wearing it. Again, talking with Georgie, actually came out here to uh, the Wausau, Wisconsin area. We met up, we've talked. Actually, I met him like over a decade ago in Chicago. And we were both on Twitter and we're talking over there. And I just went out and checked out what he was doing when he had a clothing company. So George has been on a journey and I've been proud to, you know, be a part of that, be able to support him. I know that, you know, he does a really, I don't know if he does this anymore, but he used to send out free samples. If you actually contacted him at the website, just reach out to him and say, hey, Antonio sent me, you got any free samples of, uh, you know, signature. He's a great person. What I love about George is he's, a, you know, not a self-made man, He's had great people around him, a mother that has just really helped support him. The guy is just the real deal when it comes to supporting a small perfumery, a, a guy that's just making things happen. So I'm proud to put him on the list at number three, still one of my favorite fragrances in my collection, uh, Zaharoff Signature Pour Homme. So coming in at number two is not Office. Office is a solid fragrance. And this has so many haters. Jeremy Fragrance, I think because of his personality, the things he does, the a little bit outlandish, a little bit crazy at times, but the guy partnered with Alberto Maria's and really he created an amazing fragrance here in office. And it does exactly what it was meant to do. Get you compliments in a work environment. Spray this on once, it will last all day. Spray this on three times, you are going to project. And uh, yeah, you could wear this out on the town, but really this is a simple, clean fragrance. And I could have easily put it number two, but I decided to go with black tie instead. This is my favorite fragrance from the Fragrance One collection because of just, to me, the, the mixing of the citrus with the woods, it's creamy, it's smooth. It is an absolutely beautiful fragrance and unique to, uh, I don't really have much like it in my collection. And again, I've got almost 500 fragrances. Maybe I need to pick up some more ones like this. But uh, when I got my nose on this, I absolutely fell in love with it instantly. It doesn't have the same longevity as office or date, but I didn't really need that. Uh, for me, it's just a beautiful fragrance and it's the dark horse in the Fragrance One collection. Everyone talks about office, everyone talks about date, but for me, black tie is where it's at. You don't have to dress up to wear this. This for me is incredibly versatile, just a really nice fragrance. Camille, Jeremy, you know, it, they're a family run business. And, you know, again, as many people are polarizing, you can go look on Fragrantica, everyone pans their fragrances, but when it comes down to it, they brought in a master to make these things smell them, get your nose on them, make the decision for yourself. Uh, but I have, and I'm going to put this one number two on my list. So who came in at number one on my list? Guys, I got to give it to Buck over at Big Beard Business and his enamored collection. He nailed it with two of the best fragrances in my collection. So I have to admit it was a toss up. Either one I could go with. These are both deep, rich. Uh, right here, the one I'm wearing today is Soar Exclusive. Let's just say that this thing is sweet, beautiful, touch of almond, deep, rich, just an absolute banger. Exalt Nui. This one I thought was going to be number one, but I decided to wear this today and was drawn in with the sweetness. But what I love about this one, deep, rich, earthy, it is better than Carlisle. It's compared to it, but I'd say this one takes it even in a deeper, the tobacco rich, rich to what this one is stronger. Have to say, I just absolutely love Exalt and Wheat. So uh, it's tough. Have any of you guys tried these fragrances? What are your favorite YouTuber fragrances? Again, guys, let me know down in the comments below. I always love hearing from you. And uh, yeah, I'll look forward to what you guys are saying. So what video to watch next? Guys, check out this great interview I did with Jeremy Fragrance a while back. We talked about Fragrance One. We talk about his journey. We talk about dealing with the haters. Yes, he's got a lot of those. Guys, find out what he had to say in this great interview I did with him a while back. Amazing interview. Uh, yeah, it's good. Go check it out. Click right here. You will magically go to the next video. And yes, my uh, light did go out in the background. Did you guys like the new setup? Let me know in the comments. Uh, I enjoy changing things up. But all right, guys, take care. See you in the next video.